Howdy! In this video, we're going to start to talk about limits and how to solve for them algebraically. Now, I'm sure in class you're given tons of problems. Sometimes your teacher or professor will start factoring and canceling. You know, sometimes they'll check left and right, go to infinity. Sometimes they'll be dividing everything by the high. And there's tons and tons and tons of rules, and it's really hard to keep that aligned. And so what I want to do in this video is I want to talk about how to find the limits as x approaches a number, okay? So the rules as x approaches a number will be different than the rules as the limit as x approaches infinity. We'll talk about that in another video, but in this one, we're going to talk about the limit as x approaches a number. And the strategy that I have for this is you need to plug that number, that x equals a, into your function first. So what I want you to do real quick is pause the video, jot this down, we'll talk about it, and we'll do a couple examples. Okay, so let's uh, see what's going to happen. Once you plug that number into f of x first, that's going to tell me exactly what to do. Because if I plug this number into that function, and you output a 0 over 0, what you're going to do is you're going to factor, you're going to cancel, then you're going to replug that number. Then you're going to replug that number into there after canceling. However, if you get a number divided by a zero, your final answer will equal either positive infinity, negative infinity, or it may not exist. Okay, and what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to check left and right. Okay, now the limit from the left and the limit from the right will always exist. Okay, whenever dealing with a situation like this, what you have here is a vertical asymptote. And what I want to see is from the left and right, does it go to positive infinity or negative infinity? And if they go, both go positive, then your limit's positive infinity. If they both go negative, your limit's negative infinity. But if they both go in different directions, that's when your limit does not exist. Finally, if you get a number divided by a number, like if you get 2 divided by 3, hey, guess what? You're done. It's 2 thirds. So let's take a look at a couple problems. All right, so let's do, the, let's do the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared plus x plus 3 divided by x minus 5. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug 1 into there. I'm plugging 1 into there. I'm going to have 1 plus 1 plus 3 divided by 1 minus 5, which is simply going to be 5 over negative 4. Hey, you're done. Negative 5 fourths. That is my answer. So sometimes that might be nice. Sometimes just plug it in and you'll be good to go. But let's try plugging 1 into here. Plugging 1 into here, I'd have 1 plus 1 minus 2 divided by 1 minus 9 plus 8. Well, here 2 minus 2 is 0. Negative 8 plus 8, that's 0. I get a 0 over 0. So what that tells me that I need to do is I need to factor, cancel, and replug in. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is going to be the limit as x approaches 1 of factor in this, this is going to be, uh, what's that, it's x plus 2 times x minus 1 divided by, and this would factor into, uh, whoops, just kidding, x minus 8 times x minus 1. And so, now that I factored, now that I canceled, now that I canceled, now what I'm going to have is I'm going to have the limit as x approaches 1 of x plus 2 over x minus 8. Now I know that a lot of professors are sticklers into the way that you write it and to making sure like I've seen a lot of professors take points off because they didn't write limit, limit, limit and then they wrote it in the wrong spots. Here's if you if you have a workout test or a workout question that they're real sticklers about the way that you write it. You always put limit as x approaches 1 in front until you plug the 1 into there for the last time. Once I plug 1 into here I don't have to write the limit anymore. So plugging 1 into here, I'm going to get 1 plus 2 over 1 minus 8, which is 3 over negative 7, which is negative 3 sevenths. However, to get full credit on a workout problem, make sure that you continue to write the limit in front of your function until you plug your number in for the last time. Okay? So let's take a look at this one. Let's take a look at C. I want to do the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared plus 1 over x minus 1. So plugging 1 into here, I have 1 plus 1 over 1 minus 1. Hey, that's 2 over 0. So now I have a number over 0. And so that means that my final answer 
will either be positive or negative infinity or D and E does not exist. And so what I need to do is I gotta check left and right. So let's check the left side. Now if you remember, what you have here is a vertical asymptote. So the reason that's important is when I take the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side of x squared plus 1 over x minus 1, because I know it's a vertical asymptote, I know this is going to infinity. That's not in doubt. The only thing in doubt is, is it positive or negative? So what I like to do is I pick a number slightly to the left of 1, something like 0 0.9, okay? And I'm going to plug 0 0.9 into all my x values, and I don't care about what the final values outputted. All I care about is, is it positive or is it negative? So plugging 0 0.9 into the top, 0 0.9 squared plus 1 is positive. But in the bottom, 0 0.9 minus 1, that's negative. And a positive divided by a negative is a negative infinity. So to the left side of my vertical asymptote, to the left side of 1, my graph is going down to negative infinity. So now let's see what's happening on the right side. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of x squared plus 1 over x minus 1. And because I have a number over 0, because I have a vertical asymptote, I know this is going to infinity. That's not in doubt. The only thing in doubt is, is it positive or negative? Okay, so this time I want to pick a number to the right of 1. Something like 1.1. Uh, 1. 1. 1. 1 should work. And I'm going to plug this number into my x values, and all I care about is, is it positive or is it negative? So 1.1 squared plus 1, definitely a positive number. On bottom, 1.1 minus 1, definitely a positive number. And a positive divided by a positive is a positive infinity. And the only way for a limit to exist is if the limit from the left and the right are the exact same. And in this case, they're not. Limit from the left is negative infinity. Limit from the right is positive infinity, which is why this limit straight up does not exist. Okay, so now let's talk about absolute values. And so um, let's, actually, let's actually talk about y equals absolute value of x first before I get into this problem. So y equals absolute value of x. We know what this graph looks like, right? It's that v. Okay, so here's, we'll, we'll pretend that's straight. All right, so here's y equals absolute value of x. You got that v. Now notice on the right side of, the, um, of your vertex, I guess you can call it, Notice how technically if I was to extend this line, this is the graph y equals positive x. And if I was to extend this graph, this is technically the line y equals negative x. And that's important. The reason this is important is because I can't, like, um, I guess I can't, like, cancel stuff out. I can't multiply and divide. Um, and add and subtract outside of absolute values. What I need to do is if I'm taking the limit to the left side, okay, if I'm taking the limit from the left side of an absolute value, I need to drop this absolute value so I can do algebra to this. And when I drop this absolute value, you make that a negative if you're on the left side of your vertex, okay? And if you have the limit from the right side, if I'm looking slightly to the right of this vertex, you better drop the absolute value and make that positive. Now, if I have something like y equals the absolute value of x minus 1, going back to pre-calc and remembering our, um, I guess, transformations, this graph is just sh shifted over to the right one unit. And so, here at 1, that's what that would look like. And so that's why, when I'm taking a look at this, the uh, limit as x approaches 2 from the left, and I'm going to have an x minus 2, that's sh simply shifted to the right two units which means that's where my vertex is, okay? So let's take a look at this one. I can fact, notice that when I plug two into here, I get a zero over zero. So I now need a factor cancel and replug in, but here's the problem. I can go ahead and factor out that three. I can make this the limit as x approaches two from the left of three times the absolute value of x minus two over x minus two. Here's where we run across issues. I can't cancel those x minus twos, okay? Because this function is different than this function along all x values, but slightly to the left of negative two, slightly to the left of our vertex. 
it's technically equal to, this would be the graph y equals negative x plus 1, right? And this would be the graph, or minus 1. And this would be the graph y equals x minus 1. So you need to drop the absolute values because I'm coming in from the left side. And you're going to make this a negative 3 times x minus 2 over x minus 2. And so therefore, now these x minus 2s will cancel. And so the limit as x approaches 2 from the left is equal to a minus 3. So if I kept on going with this problem, okay, if I want to do the limit as x approaches 2 from the right side, okay, I once again can factor out the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. I can factor out the 3 times x minus 2 over x minus 2, but the problem is I can't cancel it yet. But since I'm looking from the right side of my vertex, I can drop the absolute value and make this a positive 3 times x minus 2 over x minus 2, those x minus 2's cancel, and you're left with a positive 3. And so, because the limit from the left of 2 is a negative 3, the limit from the right of 2 is a positive 3, that's why this limit does not exist.